You know, there was an edict back in the day from ESPN, never talk politics. You can't do it. You mustn't do it. And so I did one day. This edict actually came after Seth Greenberg and I did this. We were watching the presidential debate, say that three times, and, you know, like most Americans, we were interested. We have nice Twitter platforms, so we started tweeting. Should have said this, might have said that. Wasn't really for or against any candidate, and then the edict came down. Don't do it. Well, of course, don't do it. Middle-aged white guy, don't do it. Jalen Rose, of course, and others did. Stephen A. Smith, what'd they care? You're not firing me. Oops, Jalen. But anyway, Pablo Torre and the little crew at ESPN, Bomani Jones, Pablo Torre, Israel, Hernandez, Rodriguez, I don't even know what the hell the guy's name is, Sarah Spain, Dan Levitard, and all the little never played, never quote, played, never coached, wonk little Wokies decided they didn't care. And they were led down a path of destruction. I think they're all gone now, except, I guess, Pablo Torre, he's woke, he's insufferable, and he's going on the record to say he doesn't care what the talent at ESPN says about criticizing former president, current Republican-elect Trump. Doesn't care, citing it isn't a big deal anymore to criticize Trump at ESPN. Duh. Duh. Hell, I had a producer named Jason McCullum, who's a segment producer for Scott Van Pelt. Come at me telling me how Biden is a public servant and Trump is basically a scoundrel. I guess they don't care anymore about keeping politics out of ESPN. And, and, and it's so funny to me because middle-aged white guy, bad. Pablo Torre, good. Let's hear from Paulo or Pablo or whatever the hell his name is. Torres, Torre, whatever. Do you have now with ESPN, like you said, Stephen A's out there endorsing people, um, and you're on Morning Joe. Do you have to be mindful, like when you're doing a Morning Joe? Oh well, I still have this part time gig with ESPN. I got to be careful or let it fly. It's a great question, man. Um, this is also new territory for me. So in my contract, I have full freedom to appear on news channels. Nice. So I've been doing Morning Joe like uh, once or twice a week since the beginning of football season last year. Um, and so I'm kind of like a part of that family, if I may be yeah. so bold as to say, in the rotation of just like people who sit around a table and do like, honestly, sports radio style political talk. Yep. And I don't worry about it, which is something that's unthinkable to the old me of like, I'm going to talk about Donald Trump regularly and right. not worry about what ESPN is going to say to me because of the contract, but also because I think the one wrinkle in this election cycle um, that's different from the previous one is that. It feels like there's just a numbness to the idea that Trump is this character and people are very mad at him. Where before it was like, I wonder if an ESPN personality is going to like break the seal and say what they really think. Everybody kind of knows how everybody feels right now. Right, 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 right. And so the idea of like, guess what happened? Yeah. Pablo Torre criticized Trump on MSNBC. It's sort of like, of course he did. Like right. Stephen A. Smith said he's a better presidential candidate the next time. It's like, of course he did. Um, right. And up and up and up. So to me, um, I just think as much as people are not prepared for, for the, and I think this is 100, 1 million percent true. Well, he misses the point. No, I mean, Pablo Torre, if his name was Ed Smith, it would be like, you're out. And you were a white guy, it'd be, you're out. I mean, these guys are so dumb, they don't even know that they are cast only for DEI. That's it. Mina Kimes, only for DEI. Pablo Torre, only for DEI. Israel Martinez, I don't even know the dude's name. He's got white hair. There's two reasons for him, and there might be two reasons for Pablo Torre. I just haven't looked it up yet. But these guys don't understand that the only reason that you can do that is not because, well, people think that they, well, everybody knows. No, it's your DEI hire. I mean, what else could it be? I mean, why else would Pablo Torre or Israel Garza or Garcia, whatever the hell it is, I can't ever remember his name, or Sarah Spain or any of these people be hired? I mean, why? ESPN used to hire the best of the best. And now they hired because we got to fill, well, Pablo Torre looks like, and I guess he's Hispanic. 
Uh, Mina Kimes looks like, I guess she is Asian. We need a big old gal up there selling her boobies. Oh, get Sarah Spain in here. You know, I mean, they think it's because everybody is well aware of the politics. No, it's because you are a DEI hire that you got to keep around, even on a limited basis. You got to throw them once in a while on a show. What's that? Around the horn. Throw them up there a little bit. That covers our white guy ass. Jimmy Patero, Connor Shell, Magnus Burke or Burke Magnus. It covers their ass. But these people are too stupid to know it. I once got in a little Twitter beef with Sarah Spade. I'm like, you don't even know. You don't even know you went from the news reader at WMVP in Chicago to get your own show at ESPN. You think it's because you actually had talent. No. By the way, Sarah Spain's bitching. They won't give her a woman-centric show at ESPN because white dudes. They don't understand the economic benefit of a woman's show. Hell, Mike and Mike were a blimp on the radar of ESPN financially. The whole ESPN radio thing is $25 million. That's nothing. Are you crazy? Come on. That's nothing to do. Pablo Torre. Well, everybody knows. And if an ESPN personality, oh, shut up. Nobody cares because you can't be fired. What are you talking about? Stephen A. Smith on ESPN politics. When you tune in to ESPN, that's what you're looking for. But in the same breath, we're mo- not monolith people. We have an abundance of ideas and passions and interests that we like to touch on that fuels our spirit and our soul uh, uh, on a lot of different levels. And you don't see me talking about those things. It's primarily because I'm appeasing the bosses in the network that I work for. Well, duh. But you do talk about those things because it's the same thing. They can't fire you, Smitty. Not because you're too valuable, because no white guy, at, I know these people, no white guy at ESPN wants to hear how racist they are. They want to keep status quo, keep the games. You're okay, we put these guys over here, but the games are the thing. The NFL is the thing. We add to it. We make sure we're, quote, diverse enough. And go do your thing over here. We don't care. You don't affect us. You enhance us just simply by being here. That's the way they think. And, of course, they let you do it. Of course. I mean, damn. Let some white dude go on that station and support Trump. And see what happens to his contract. Let some white dude go on that station and say black people, like you said, white people, Smith, don't involve yourselves in this. It ain't about you. It's a white thing. And see what happens to him. Aren't you folks smart enough? Don't you know? Do I have to be the one to always tell you? Do I? Here's Smith lying about politics at the Sports Network. Don't think we have a side for this. Oh, we don't have a side. Talking about Floyd, Texas abortion law, or Florida pre- <coughs> preventing pornography from being in first grade classrooms. No, they support that. Uh, is not what a sports network does. And it certainly is not some inevitable transition, transformation. ESPN should be far more concerned about the dying quality, the dying quality of its actual content made most apparent by a blowhard in Smith being one of the most prominent faces on the network than about trying to be like every other (laughs) Joe Biden moment, every other liberal political media outlet in the country. No viewers asked Smith or Duncan a lecture about politics, and certainly no one asked Patero to allow them to do so when viewers just want to watch sports. That's all we want. That's it. There's no law in Florida that says don't say gay. That was made up. And L. Duncan, a mediocre kind of goofy-ass DEI hire, made it into a thing because she heard it from others. Certainly not clever enough to come up with that, but she put it out to continue a lie. I mean, there isn't one ESPNer there that cares about abortion or that cares about any other thing If ESPN's executive said, look, if you keep talking about it, I'm firing you. You want to protest? Protest. Go over there, protest. You're not the first. You won't be the last. 
But ESPN lost control of their organization after George Floyd. They did. It's out of control with politics. It's out of control with stupid. And this just ain't DEI. This is across the board stupid. I mean, you watch their games. They got stupid broadcasted. And that's not their fault. Well, it kind of is their fault. Their good announcers left or they retired. Doesn't matter. Their good play-by-play voices said, screw this, and left. It's changed. Great. Maybe for the better. Maybe to most people it's good that ESPN criticizes Trump. To me, it's not. To me, it's hypocritical. If I want it, I'll turn me on, or I'll turn Fox on, or I will not turn MSNBC on. Eh, maybe I'll just go to bed. Anyway, what a bunch of crap. And ESPN... Your, your shows show it. The quality of your shows show it. You got plays missed. You got misspellings all over the place during draft night. You're late to things because you've gone full woke and you don't hire the best people. Uh, the New York Times, speaking of full woke, there is a lady named Margaret Renkel. And she's going full commie on us. Commie alert. We should have a button. We should have a buzzer. Er, 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 er. Commie alert. Commie alert. She put an op-ed, and the New York Times allowed it on July 4th, crying about fireworks and the selfishness of patriotism. I'm all in on patriotism. The conflation of selfishness with patriot is the thing that I have the hardest time accepting about our political era. Okay, honey, sweetie, peaches, go over there. Go have a hard time over there. Go do that. You have a hard time? Oh, sad. Go over there. <clears throat> Maybe we have the right to eat a hamburger or drive the biggest truck on the market or fire off bottle rockets deep into the night on the 4th of July. But a date doesn't make us good Americans to do such thing. Okay, no one said it does. It just makes you having fun. How can it possibly be American to look at the damage fireworks can cause? Yeah, you're right. Uh, To the atmosphere, to forests, to wildlife, to our own beloved pets. And shrug. And shrug. Oh, I'm shrugging. Look at my pet. Hey, let me explain something to you. I got a dog, Lula. If Lula don't like fireworks, Lula goes in her room. Seriously, in her room. That's it. Adios. What are you doing? People are idiots. People will bitch about anything, by the way. The truly American thing would be to join together to make every change we can reasonably make to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures, human and other than human alike. The truly American thing would be to plant a victory garden large enough to encompass the natural world. Yeah! Yeah! I'll bring the corn. There's more than corn in Indiana. Yeah! Hell yeah! I'll bring the corn. You bring the beans. You bring the sprouts. Somebody get the damn livestock and let's go. The fuck's wrong with you, lady? Honest to God, we bitch about everything. We bitch about fireworks, firecrackers, firewood, fire in the hole. We bitch about every damn thing there is. And I've had enough. I got my shirt on that my boss, Gary, said he's going to wear on the 4th of July. Damn right I do. And if you want this merch, outkick.com, you can get it. It's good merch. Great, great feel to the merch. But I'm going to wear it, and I'm going to wear it proudly, I'm going to bust off some bottle rockets, some firecrackers, I'm going to throw M-80s in a lake, and screw you, lady. Screw you and the horse you're underneath. That's right. I said it. I meant it. I saw the donkey show in Juarez one time. Get out of here with that crap. But hey, lady, think about this. We're talking about you. No, we're talking about you. Isn't that exciting for you? You did an op-ed. I want to go... And plant a victory garden large enough to encompass the entire natural world. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Solid. Solid as a rock. (laughs) Where do we get these people? Seriously, where do we get these people? Hey, speaking of people, the best of the best of the best among us, and I don't give a damn whether it's military, sports, politics, whatever, was Pat Tillman. Said at the time when he left the Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals, and went and went into the Rangers. Said it at the time that he and his brother are the best of the best of the best among us. Pat Tillman died. 
Pat Tillman died at the hands of his own nation. Friendly fire got him. The government tried to lie. His parents, as brave as Pat, stood up to the government and demanded answers. They got him. They found out. Government lied. Now, ESPN has an award, Pat Tillman Award. And the Pat Tillman Award is unbelievable. It's incredible that ESPN has this many dirtbags in it. The Pat Tillman Award is going to go to the Duke of Sussex. That's Prince Harry. Prince Harry is going to get maybe the award that would mean the most to me, the Pat Tillman Award. Probably mean the most to a lot of people. If Pat Tillman's on an award and you'd get that award, damn, that's pretty good. But the mother of Pat Tillman is like, what the hell are we doing? Rightfully saying, what the hell are we doing? You're doing what now? You're giving an award for honor, bravery to Prince Harry? The mother says she was never consulted by the sports network to give the Duke of Sussex the Pat Tillman Award. The soldier's mother, Mary, said she was not consulted. I am shocked as to why they would select such a controversial and divisive individual to receive the award. There are recipients that are more fitting. There are individuals working in the veteran community that are doing tremendous things to assist veterans. These individuals do not have the money, resources, connections, or privilege that Harry has. I feel that those types of individuals should be recognized. Well, she's right. But here's the problem. You gave your award's name or you turned your award over to a company that every single Time will F it up in the name of wokeness. Every single time will F it up in the name of putting somebody on there that people recognize. Now, let me say it again. Every time they will put somebody on their television at ESPN that you recognize. It's called playing the hits at ESPN. That's what it's called. Why do you think back you saw Brett Favre every day? Why do you think you see Aaron Rodgers, LeBron James, the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott? Every day. Every day. You, it's called playing the hits. And that's what ESPN does. The ward was set up. I found this. Mary Tillman says that it is far more fitting recipients for the award, which was set up by ESPN in 2024 to recognize people with a strong connection to sports who have served others in a way that echoes her son's legacy. You're telling me Prince Harry and his little wife, girlfriend, whatever the hell, the little pain in the ass, Markle? have served any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I understand they probably went out and for photo ops did work that her mother did, his mother did, Princess Diana. We all get that. We all get that. But, but, here's the deal. Princess Harry right now is a figure of divisiveness and frankly a figure of stupidity and a figure of those people. You know what I'm saying? It's a she, the, she and he are those people. Yeah, those people over there. The royal family, they call themselves. Those people over there, <clears throat> they don't represent anything about Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman represents all of us, black, white, military, non-military. He represents strong and tough and honest. These people represent, as Mary Tillman said, privilege, money, be, being, <clears throat> being, I love this say, uh, born on third base and thinking you hit a triple. You couldn't have a bigger divide than Pat Tillman and Prince Harry, yet ESPN does what ESPN does. They play the hits, and it works. You'll watch the ESPYs. You're talking about the ESPYs. more you talk, the more you watch. But damn. I didn't realize, I should have realized that the idiots running ESPN ever since Norby Williamson was let go have no soul. They don't care. DEI, play the hits, no articles, my 401k is filled, my stock options are okay, let's go. 
That's it. On the fourth, well, I don't know if it's the fourth floor. Maybe Aaron would know. But building four in ESPN, probably the seventh floor. That's it. That's where decisions like this are made. And the level of stupidity, well, unprecedented. Chris Broussard and I are going to talk about a couple of things. I'm sorry about my throat today. I've been dealing with a cold forever. But anyway, Chris Broussard and I are going to talk about some things, one of which happened last night. No, I'm not talking about the Celtics giving another $50, $60 million contract to Jason Tatum. We are going to talk about that. But per Woj, the Celtics owner, the majority ownership group, led by Wick Krosbeck, is planning to make the franchise available for sale. As the investment group purchased the team back in 2002, oh, 2002, only to become one of the most valuable franchises. Man, isn't that funny? No, seriously, isn't that amazing? You think about it. The Boston Celtics, if you are a lifetime basketball, Boston, I don't know, fan, What franchise would you rather own than the Boston Celtics? I'll give you the answer. It would either be the Chicago Cubs or the New York Knicks to me. I'm sorry, or the New York Yankees to me. It wouldn't be anything other than those two. Now, now, having said that, the Boston Celtics, my God, would be right there. And coming off of a championship, these are businessmen. These are always businessmen. And the Boston Celtics franchise, I'm trying to find out how much it's worth. I tried to look this morning, and I couldn't find it. Boston Celtics just winning a title enhances the franchise. Uh, But it makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. Why would you want to sell? Why would you want to sell now? says that in all of sports, the number four team is the Boston Celtics. There you go. All right. Uh, One point – wait, I got to look this up. I I saw this, and I'm not smart enough. Uh, The team's value is $5 billion. I don't know what you get out of $5 billion if you're the majority owner. And I don't know how you divide it up, but that's a pretty good number. Yeah, I just don't care about nepotism and Bronny James. I, I don't. I mean, nepotism is all over everything. Bronny James' selection by the Los Angeles Lakers in the 2024 draft has reignited the nepotism conversation in the NBA. Anthanius Antipacupo takes Charles Barkley's nepotism dig as a compliment. He's the brother of the Greek freak. You see people say some stuff online like, hey, guys, if you really, really knew, you'd be like, what? So Giannis gets drafted, and in the same draft, in the same draft that Giannis gets drafted, I have an agent at the time, still my agent. I was the best man at his wedding. They call him and go, hey, Dennis is in the draft. It's like two days before, and he goes, no, he's not in the draft. What? It's a compliment because that means I'm a good person. No one gives you nothing if they don't like you. First of all, you got to bring something to the table. I actually like Charles Barkley, and I actually like Shaq. Thing is, what happens is some kids believe that. What? <clears throat> okay. I don't know even know what that means. I don't have an I I have no idea. None. Zero. Zip. Oh, man. They bought the team for $360 million, going to sell it for $5 billion. That's good. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't know what I just read. All I know is this. If you're going to draft the Greek freak and you know his history – There's no problem drafting his brothers. If you're going to hire Larry Bird at Indiana as the coach, general manager, you're going to get a kid or two of his on the staff. Kevin Pritchard, kid on the staff. Nepotism is alive and well in the NBA. Nepotism is alive and well everywhere. Who cares? Why do you care? Let me ask you that question. Why does everybody care so much about Bronny James getting drafted? I think. His father has earned it. I think LeBron James, Michael Jordan, you name it, they've earned the right to ask a franchise to do them a solid. I guarantee you Jeannie Buss and others have asked LeBron James a bazillion times to do them a solid. Yo, LeBron, can you sign this? Can you show up here? Can you do this? Guarantee that's happened. And I guarantee you LeBron has done most, done some. So what the hell? What's the problem? 
There is no problem. And I root for Bronny James. He seems like a good kid. The easiest thing in the world to do would be to complain. The easiest thing in the world to do would say, well, he doesn't deserve it. Why not? He did what kids do. Pretty good in high school. Went to college. Had a heart issue. Came off the heart issue. Played for his team. Didn't have a preseason. Hell, I'm sure at one point a young kid with a heart issue didn't even know if he'd get to play basketball again, much less be alive. So what's the problem? Nepotism. Shut up. Just shut up. I told you this before. As soon as I saw the nepotism charge, I ran to the Pacers front office. Kevin Pritchard, general manager, son's a scout. Larry Bird, son's on the staff. Hell, A.J. Foyt kid's running around there. A.J. Foyt, the race car driver, his grandson's running around there. I got no problem. As they say in the movies, I got no problem with it. None. Zero. Zip. In fact, I hope he makes a team. I hope they play together. It's another standard that LeBron James would have set. Yeah, I'm all in on it. Nick, where are you in on it? You in on Bronny James? You good with it? You, you think I'm crazy? Uh, he should have drafted, shouldn't. Where are you at? You're young. You're smart. No, I don't care at all. I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing, and I think you've hit it on the head. LeBron earned it. You know, he's a household name in the NBA. Kid earned it. I don't see a problem with Bronny going to any team, even if it wasn't the Lakers, if he went to, like, the Utah Jazz, if they picked him up, or – uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, like, you know, if LeBron made a call saying, like, hey, draft my son, who gives, who, who gives a shit? That's right. Doesn't matter. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, you know, if you draft him first or you draft him, you know, you got the third pick in the draft and you draft him over other guys, if I were a season ticket holder, I'd be like, yo, what are we doing? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, 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 hey. But I'm not. Are we mad at U.S. soccer? Do we care about U.S. soccer? Not the biggest soccer guy in the world per se, but I will admit that that roster is super, super talented, and they are wasting their years not being able to win jack squat. And a lot of the people are calling for the head coach to get fired, and I don't. I truly don't blame them. I hear that guy's a jackass, so might as well start looking for somebody else. Um, people are ripping on Alexi Lalas for, you know, having an unfiltered uh, point of view, but he's absolutely right. The, the, the national team should really fire him. Well, Lalas just says, look, 2026, we're hosting the World Cup and you can't show up and not qualify. You can't be any good. You can't be an embarrassment. I guess you get to qualify because you're hosting, but you can't be any good. Now, there's articles left and right, uh, Jeff Carlisle, in ESPN says, well, <clears throat> Greg Burkhalter, he's got to go. You know, I- I'm a lot older than you, and when I was younger than you, when I was like 16, 18, 15, whatever, all I ever heard was soccer in the United States is coming. We got the best players coming up. You'll see soccer's going to bypass in uh, basketball. Soccer's going to bypass baseball. Soccer's going to be the number one thing in the United States. I don't know. Seems like to me, you can tell me I'm wrong, but seems like to me soccer's in the same spot it's always been. Kind of well, middle. Well, I would argue that soccer is still very popular in America. It's just not U.S. soccer. It's not MLS. People care more about Arsenal, Man City. People care more about AC Milan. That's what they really care about. People will buy the packages and want to watch their – because there's a lot of – there's a ton of Americans who are playing overseas in Europe. There are a ton of people who are playing for – Saudi Arabia, they want to watch those games instead of MLS. Nobody gives a crap about MLS. The only thing they care about, the MLS is inner Miami with with Lionel Messi. That's it. Other than that, they can give a rat's ass about the LA Galaxy and all those teams. No, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, You're 1,000% right. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, I don't understand it. Like, you know, I get it, but – I don't get it. Why are people so interested in soccer I, I, overseas? I don't know. It's fun. Ted Lasso. It's so much better. That's why. Yeah, it's that's... more fun. The The U.S. soccer here sucks. That's why. They don't put enough money into it. They don't – like New York City Football Club, ass. It's not, it's not fun at all. But 
you know, you want to want to, my first soccer game, I'll give you an example. It was in Arsenal back in London when I went in November. It was the most electric game I've ever been to in my life. More than a baseball game, more than a basketball game. They had, they know how to put on a good show. They know how to uh, engage their crowd. So I understand why people go to Europe more than they do um, like the United States. It's just, you know, U.S. soccer is boring. Fair enough. Uh, breaking news. It broke right before the show. Donovan Mitchell, three-year, $50 million a year. He's going to make $150 million. Man, I got to tell you, people can complain. They can say whatever they'd like about anything they would like about, you know what? Here's the deal, man. Uh, NBA sucks. Ratings suck. Yeah? Really? Huh. Interesting. Doesn't seem like they will. 